Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I'm gonna to answer the most asked question I ever get, not just on this channel, but at conventions, by email, when people visit the studios I worked at, friends, family, the number one asked question. How do I get a job in the game industry? Often with a sub question, well, how did you get your job? Implying that I'll just do that. I'm gonna answer the second question first, cause it's fun. Then I'm gonna answer the first question with tough love. Some of you won't like the answer. Okay. So the first question or the second question I'm gonna, which I answer first is how did I get a job? Kind of goes back to Wow, 1976, I think. Our family got a Pong unit, which was a console you hooked up to the TV. It just played one game, Pong, and the controllers were built into the console. So everybody had to hover over this device. But we loved it. A couple years later, we got the Atari VCS, which also called the Atari 2600, which had cartridges. You could swap out games. It had controllers that were on wires. So you could be sitting back on the couch and still be playing the game. This console ignited my brain. I thought about it all the time. When I wasn't playing games, I was thinking about them. I designed games based on games that I either played or saw on their catalog. Because every time you bought a game, you got a little catalog that you could look at, of the other games they offered. I wrote these designs down. They included images that I drew. And when I was 13, I mailed these to Atari, saying, basically, let's make games. They answered. I got a very nice letter, and I believe uh, she called as well, pretty much saying, well, go to college, study computer science, call us, which basically <laughs> call us in eight years. And they also sent me a coupon, a coupon for $5 off. I never used it. I thought having that was cooler than buying a game. And I've told you, my mom is really cool. She kept all that. And years later, she gave it to me. So here it is. These, uh, let me see if I can get it with that. This is the stuff I made, the written design, some of the images, the very nice letter I got back from them, the, the coupon for $5 off. And I framed it because I thought it'd be cool to keep this. But anyway, I love having stuff like that. I told you I keep everything. So did my mom. <laughs> so what ended up happening was my high school, when I was 14, so the next year, got Atari 800s. And I used them all the time. I was always there. I would go after class. I would stay until the math teacher shut down the computer lab. Eventually, he gave in and let me shut down the computer lab. And then I started getting in trouble because I was coming home late, after dark, after dinner time, because I just could not stop coding. So when I was 16, well, no, a little before 16, 15, 15 and a half, my mom helped me get a computer, an Atari 800 of my own, and I just went insane. I was coding, I was playing games. Um, my One of my sisters was in college. I grabbed one of her programming books, it was on BASIC, read it cover to cover, and then started programming in BASIC, but I couldn't do everything. So I started investigating more and I learned some assembly how to peek and poke into memory location so I could do things that I wanted to do that weren't available in basic. I also learned all the graphics modes and sound of the Atari 800. A friend of mine in high school who's two years older, he graduated, got a job. He contacted me that summer. So for me, it was the summer between my 10th and 11th grade. So sophomore, between my sophomore and junior year. And he said, hey, I'm working at a company. They make games. They need to make an art tool and it has to have resolution and color beyond what PCs can do or Apple IIs can do. And I know you can do it on an Atari 800. Are you interested? And I was and went out there and they interview and a little test. They had me sit down on Atari 800 and I showed them the, they're called the extended graphics modes. And they offered me a job. And I was like, well, I would have difficulty coming out here because I don't drive. And they're like, well, why don't you have a license? And I'm like, I'm 15. Well, it turns out in Virginia, it's not legal to hire, at least in the 80s, teenagers under 
16 for certain jobs. And one of them is all, you can't be, you can't have an office job. I could have done fast food or worked in a retail uh, thing or farming agricultural jobs. But instead they said, well, contact us in your birthday. And I said, well, it's only in two months. And if we haven't filled the position, we'll hire you. Well, I called them saying my birthday was next week. Is the job available? It was. So the day I turned 16, my mom took me to the DMV. I got my license. I drove her home and then drove out to this company. And that was my first day on the job. So I've effectively been in the game industry since I was 16. Now, I don't think my advice to you is the best way to get in the game industry is to have knowledge of a computer's extended graphics modes that no one else in a 50 mile radius has. But maybe if that's the kind of specialization you want to do. So I just tell people that because I want to say that's how I got in the industry. Probably not going to work for you. Here's what will. And my answer is based on decades of being involved in the hiring process. Especially the beginning part of the process where HR will pass you a ton of resumes saying, oh, you're looking for a programmer, you're looking for an artist, you're looking for a designer. Here, here's what we got. So my answer is very simple, how you can get a job in the game industry. Many of you aren't going to like it. Many of you are going to argue. I don't care. Here's how you do it. If you want a job in the game industry, make a game. That's it. Make a game. Now, immediately I can hear people go, well, I'm an artist. I don't know how to code. Or I'm a writer. I can't make put together a game. Sure you can. There are so many game engines out there. Besides Unity and Unreal, there's Godot, there's Game Salad. I mean, there's just a ton. You have you literally have no excuse because you can go to their stores. Like you can go to Unity store and buy a little game already made. And then if you're a writer, you can put your own writing into it. If you're an artist, you can drop your own art into it. Even better, you can learn how to script. It's not that hard and you can extend it. And it will show off your assets. I can tell you when we get a resume, <clears throat> it's hard to tell. You, you, you only usually end up with one clear winner. You usually don't get a bunch of narrative designers and go, wow, did you see this writer? He's William Shakespeare of computer games. That doesn't tend to happen. You tend to get several people and they're all good in different ways. Maybe somebody's writing in the style that your game is going to be, but somebody else has a better writing sample, but it's in a completely different genre. So you decide, let's interview these people. I can tell you that if they, when they send in their resume, if they included, well, it used to be a floppy disk with a game on it, but if they include a link to a web page, you can play it online or a Dropbox download that you can play. Those people move to the head of the queue because first of all, you already like their work, but now it shows that they did something with it. I said this before in another video, ideas are a dime a dozen. I don't really even care if you have ideas. We all have ideas. Everybody I've worked with in the industry has ideas. I have books. I have books full of ideas. I could make a new game every year from now until I die, which is hopefully in many decades. And I would not run out of ideas. So what I care more is that you know how to realize your ideas because it will show me that you know how to edit. You know what, what's a good idea for a game and what's not a good idea for a game. It shows me that you can have two ideas and understand that they don't go together in the same game. A very difficult skill. Took me a long time to master. I, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't know if I've mastered it yet. It takes a long time to learn that skill. So just having someone provide that puts you to the head of the queue. Doesn't guarantee you're going to get a job, but I do guarantee it'll put you in the front of the queue. I've hired people based on the strength of their demo. In fact, I hired someone not because their demo was good, but because I also got to see the source code and that was good. So it was a programmer. They hadn't finished their game. I got to see it anyway. Really good code. Hired that guy. Still in the industry today. So that's my short answer to, well, it's not that short. How do you get a game, job in the game industry? And it really is, I don't care if you're a designer or an artist or a programmer. Make something. Show me that you will go that extra step to realize your idea into something that exists. 
There are so many ways you can do it that there's literally no excuse not to. And if, if that doesn't encourage you enough, know that other people do this and you are competing with them for jobs. So if you really want a job in the game industry, that's what I recommend you do. And if you think it's too much, there are lots of other jobs you can get that don't require things like that. Or you might get lucky and apply to a job and be so far in advance of the other candidates that you don't need to show something like that. But if you don't want to take a chance on getting lucky, I'd recommend putting in a little extra work, making a game, and show off your stuff in context. So I hope that helps. I hope you all go out and get video game jobs. Bye.